hazardous tales. Start that over. Hey, everybody. That was my brand new intro recorded by my uh, little brother, Ben. Thanks for the intro, Ben. And that's my animated hangman. I'm not a good animator, but I think he's kind of cute. Anyway, we're going to start all the videos with that new uh, cute intro. I hope you like it. But enough about that. Let's talk about the underground abductor. I've never made a book trailer before. This is my first book trailer that I have created. Let's talk about it. The underground abductor is book number five in the Hazardous Tales series. You fans of the series know that the first book is about the Revolutionary War, One Dead Spy. The second book is about the Civil War Navy, that's Big Bad Ironclad. The third book is about the Donner Party, the Donner Dinner Party is the name of that one. The fourth book is about World War I, called Treaties, Trenches, Mud, and Blood. And this book, The Underground Abductor, is number five. Now, the cool thing about The Underground Abductor, this book is really the most biographical of all of them. Uh, this one, One Dead Spy, does feature Nathan Hale, kind of his birth and the rest of his life and his spying adventures. So this one is definitely a biography book. Big Bad Ironclad covers a lot of people. We got Will Cushing and his crazy adventures trying to blow up ironclads and pranking his way through the Civil War. We've also got John Erickson and his inventing of the Monitor for Lincoln. We also had Lincoln's Navy Secretary Gideon Wells and Gideon Wells' little helper Gustavus Fox. I mean, this was a whole bunch of people. Donner Party, also a bunch of people. We got the Reeds. We got the Donners. We got all of those kids, all of those people. Billy the Pony. We can't forget Billy the Pony. There he is. World War I. Oh, good grief. Treat his trenches, mud, and blood focused on a cast of thousands. Really, it was more about whole countries and what countries did. Definitely the least biographical of all of them. But this book, book number five, brings us all the way back around to the biographical. This book is all about one character. Now, of course, this one character had lots of side characters along the way. If you remember in one Dead Spy, we had Henry Knox, and we had uh, all these other characters, Ethan Allen, Cosm Trouble, everybody over there doing that stuff. And it's the same with the underground abductor. Our character, our main person, our historical figure in this book is named Araminta Ross. And she has adventures that are just as crazy just as dangerous in fact more crazy and more dangerous than a lot of these other hazardous tales and that's a pretty tall order because these guys all had a lot of crazy dangerous adventures but let's talk about Araminta Ross I don't want to spoil too much of the book because a lot of good stuff happens in here a lot of good surprises but I do want to talk about this in about 1835 Araminta was going to the store with one of her friends. Now, Araminta Ross was a slave. She lived a slave's life in Maryland in 1835. This was before the Civil War, and people were slaves in the South. It was a terrible time in American history. Araminta was about 12, 13, not very old. She was, uh, she'd been working all day uh, breaking flax in a big flax breaking machine. Flax is a crop that you've got to smash up and she would have this big machine. She was working all day. She was really uh, covered with all this broken flax and her hair was standing straight up. She said it stuck up like a bushel basket. One of her buddies came along and said, hey, Araminta, I'm going to the store. Do you want to come with me? And Araminta was like, yeah, I could use a little break. I can help you carry stuff. Let's go to the store. So they went to this little country store where they had a list of things they were supposed to buy for the house and then carry back. So they went to this store down at the crossroads and they went in. But Araminta said, you know what? I'm kind of embarrassed about how much my hair is sticking up. And her friend said, here, why don't you take this? And she gave her a scarf, which she wrapped her hair in. Araminta wrapped up her hair and said, you know what? I'm still kind of embarrassed about my hair. I'll just wait outside. When you get the stuff, I will help you carry it back. And her friend said, okay, fine, suit yourself. And she went into the store 
and Araminta just kind of waited outside. Now soon there was a crazy commotion because a slave from a nearby plantation was running away from an overseer. An overseer is the person who is in charge of the slaves. And this person can be a very evil type of person, have a whip or a gun or things like that. But the overseer chased this runaway slave into this store while Araminta's friend was inside doing some shopping. The person running the store was in there helping uh, facilitate the uh, purchase. Anyway, into the store bursts this slave. and He's running and he's dodging around. The overseer bursts into the back door. The slave starts running for the front door. Now, who was outside the front door but Araminta with her bandana on? And she says, you know, what's going on? And she peeks in the door right when the slave, the runaway, is running for the door. The overseer said, hey, you, girl, out there by the door, block the door so the slave can't get away. Now, Araminta, we can't know her motives. We don't know if she moved slowly on purpose or was just scared by everything or was purposefully getting between the, the uh, slave and the overseer. Anyway, she let the slave get past her and he ran off down the road as fast as he could. By then, though, she was blocking the door. So she's like, I'm following the directions. He said to block the door. He didn't say when to block the door because now I'm blocking the door. This overseer was super angry. He was tired of chasing the slave. He decided to try a new tactic. He reached back behind him for something to throw at the runaway slave. What he found behind him was a weight. Now, in those, in those days when you were buying something, they would have a scale on the counter in order to weigh the item you were buying. So the scale would have a set of weights. So if you were buying, you know, I don't know, a pound of salt, they would put a pound weight on so that it balanced out and then you could buy it. This overseer reached back, grabbed the first thing his fingers could find, which was one of these weights, and he threw it with all of his strength at the runaway slave. It didn't hit the runaway, it hit Araminta, and it hit her right in the forehead. Split her skull open. Knocked her out cold on the ground. She was laying on the ground, out cold, blood pouring from her head wound. Everybody ran forward. The guy was like, it's her fault for standing in the way. She was laying there with the blood just pouring out of her head. Now what had happened was this weight had actually cut the bandana and split her skull. In fact, it was so bad that a piece of the bandana was pushed into her brain. They took her to a nearby barn and they operated. They took the bandana off, saw that there was a hole in the bandana, and somebody had to actually fish inside her skull to get that piece of cloth that was missing. Now, fortunately, she survived. But she had a big scar on her head the rest of her life. She still wore a bandana all the time, maybe in some instances to keep the scar covered, but she had this scar for the rest of her life. But it wasn't just a scar because this changed the way Araminta's brain worked. In fact, from that injury, from that moment on, she began to experience what doctors now call narcolepsy, which means at any given time she could suddenly fall asleep. And she did, and she did often. She would be working, fall asleep. She'd be talking, fall asleep, and then wake up a few seconds later and continue talking like nothing had happened. This became incredibly difficult when she became our title character, the underground abductor, which is somebody who works on the Underground Railroad. She was leading other slaves to freedom through secret paths against terrible odds of people searching for her with dogs and with guns and with rifles and she would be leading slaves through the forest through the dark streets trying to get to safety everybody had faith that she would get them there and she would be sneaking along and suddenly boom asleep Zzzz. this was an amazing and crazy disease to have if you were working on the Underground Railroad because at any minute you could fall asleep. Now, not only did it cause her to fall asleep, but it also gave her 
Visions. Now, you guys who are fans of the Hazardous Tales series know that a lot of times we get to do some kind of fun, interesting, weird stuff that you don't get in a standard history book or textbook. For example, in the Donner Party, we had the Spectre of Death. Here's a character you don't get to read about in a regular history textbook, the Grim Reaper. He followed our Donner Party members as they tried to make their way across the plains and uh, often he would catch them. Not a speaking character, a metaphorical, metaphysical character who was a part of the narrative because yes, the Donner Party was trying to escape death all the time, but since our book is a comic book, death is actually physically chasing them. We also have in the World War I book the figure of Ares, the god of war, who as the war gets bigger and uglier also gets bigger and uglier and more mechanized. And by the end of it, he's breathing gas. It's covered with machine parts and is scarier and scarier. Anyway, in this book, Araminta's visions fill this same space in the graphic novel where it's something interesting and strange and the type of thing that you couldn't do in a regular history book. But since this is a graphic novel, we can show the visions that Araminta was having when she would fall into this narcoleptic state. The fascinating visions. In fact, here, I'll show you a few of them. Often, when she was on the road, she would run into places where suddenly she would get a premonition of something scary happening ahead on the road. Strange horsemen chasing her. She would get these visions and oftentimes she would act on these visions, and oftentimes these visions would get her out of trouble. Crazy visions, like this one. I'm not even gonna spoil that one. This is so weird, but it's an exact description of one of the visions she had. You're gonna have to read a book to find out about that one. This, uh, not only do we touch on Araminta's visions, we touch on the visions of other characters from this same period. This was another slave who had visions. His name was Nat Turner. You'll have to read the book to see what his visions and what his visions caused him to do were. Along with all of the visions, we of course have all kinds of adventure and crazy stuff. We'll see how some of these underground railroad rescues work. We'll see some of the crazy ways that a lot of these people seeking freedom were able to get to freedom. Adventure, jailbreak, crazy stories. This is such a hazardous, hazardous tale. Civil War is also a big part of it. You'll have to read the book to see how. There you have it. The Underground Abductor. Number five in the Hazardous Tales series. Look at this. Here's a sneak peek of the cover without the title on it. You won't see that. You, everybody's book has the title. This cover doesn't have the title. If you're wondering about this flag up here, this is the flag of Maryland. Oh, probably one of my favorite state flags. It's really cool looking. Anyway, with all the trailers that come out for books or movies, a lot of times you have to wait until the following summer or this holiday. Well, guess what? This book trailer for The Underground Abductor comes out the day the book comes out. If you've seen this trailer, guess what? The book is out. Go get it. Enjoy it. Thanks for watching. Have a great Hazardous Tales 5 launch day.